If you use QuickBooks for your business, you probably already noticed that some things are starting to change and there are more changes coming. So we're talking about things like pricing, features, support, all of that is changing and you wanna stay up to date, especially if this is something that could affect you. Hey everyone, Jamie Troll here, your favorite CPA and financial literacy coach. And on this channel, I bring you all the things you need to know to help you manage your business finances effectively, like talking about the tools that we use. And as someone that creates a lot of content around accounting softwares, I have seen the frustrations where it relates to QuickBooks. I've seen your comments and your questions. And so I took some time to really get up to speed on what is going on in QuickBooks, what has been changing, what direction are they going, and what changes can we expect in the recent future. So in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the good changes that QuickBooks is making, as well as some of the maybe not so great changes and how they could affect you. So let's talk about the first change that you may have seen recently, depending on which product you use, and that is subscription pricing changes. So as with anything else, they are constantly looking at their pricing and making adjustments. However, depending on which QuickBooks solution you use, you might feel this more or less than others. So for instance, if you have been using QuickBooks desktop, you know that they're really moving towards the subscription model, meaning that if in the past you to buy a desktop version and use that for years upon years. Now they are making that much harder, if not impossible to do. And we're going to talk a little bit more about some of those changes with QuickBooks desktop specifically here in a little bit. But the goal of QuickBooks is really to move everyone onto this subscription pricing and preferably cloud-based subscription pricing. Now, when it comes to the discussion about cloud-based versus desktop-based, I know people have very, very strong feelings on this matter, but but the truth of the matter is that QuickBooks and not just QuickBooks, the industry in general is really moving towards the cloud. That doesn't mean there aren't other options, but those options are getting increasingly more expensive and more cost prohibitive, especially for smaller businesses. And not only that, pricing has been changing as well for the online products too. So when we look at where pricing was, let's say a couple of years ago with QuickBooks Online, most of those packages have gone up about 20 to 40 percent in cost. And so that for a small business might be fairly significant. Now, when I looked back at old prices from circa 2023 or so, I noticed that it's actually Simple Start, the lowest QuickBooks online plan that has increased the most. That has had about a 40% increase in their regular price. And that's for the smallest business owners. So while the dollar amount it's gone up per month might not seem like a lot, it is a significant increase in the cost. And that's being burdened by our smallest business owners who have the most entry level QuickBooks online plan. So as far as timing, I'm recording this in the beginning of 2025. The last price increase just happened in the fall. Hopefully we won't see another one coming anytime soon, but that's just something to watch when it comes to QuickBooks because they are continually adjusting their prices. Now on the flip side, that leads me to my point number two of the changes happening in QuickBooks. And they are also rolling out some kind of new cool stuff. So the second thing I'm gonna talk about is the new feature upgrades and AI tools that they have been rolling out. So on the plus side, while it might be getting more expensive to have QuickBooks, they are getting more and more features that are in some ways pretty cool and new and might be really helpful for your business. So I just navigated over here to the QuickBooks landing page. Now note that these are the current page on the regular website. I do have deals that go for actually 12 months over on my special partner link. So if you go to jamietrollcom forward slash QuickBooks, you can check out my current uh, preferred pricing as a partner of theirs. Um, but what I wanted to show you here was this new Intuit Assist. And I think that's actually a pretty cool new feature that they have been rolling out. And this is really their AI functionality. And there's some automation. You can use invoice reminders to get help you get paid faster, do some of the tedious tasks. It's actually pretty cool. So I'm going to show you one of the things that it can do related to invoices. I'm going to go jump over there now just to do a quick demo. So here we are. We're going to try out the new Intuit Assist 
that comes in QuickBooks Online. And one of the big things that it does is invoice generation. So there's a lot of talk of being able to generate invoices. You can um, even copy paste emails um, or you can even forward emails and get them to create an invoice based on an email. So I'm just gonna put some information, just general notes maybe. Uh, maybe I just did some work for a client. I want to send them an invoice. So I've put in just some, you know, in a format of notes like you would normally take. It doesn't have to be um, beautiful. You can say, hey, I want a discount. Here's the due date. Here's uh, the information for the invoice. So you can just kind of jot that down or it can pull it from, say, emails or something like that. And then we're going to autofill the invoice and we're going to check and see how it did. So this is especially great if you're on site and you're just trying to generate an invoice quickly and you can make some notes in your system. So, uh, okay, it's got the bill too, that looks correct. The invoice date is today. The due date of 315 agrees to what I said. And then let's look. So uh, it looks like remove debris, shrubs. So I'm checking through the numbers. That all looks correct. And did it apply the discount? That's the question. And it looks like it did. So it applied a 10% discount and then it has an invoice total and you can go ahead and send that invoice directly to your client even when you're on site. So I actually think that's a pretty cool thing. Now it's currently in beta, but it is included with new subscriptions and I'm sure they're gonna be rolling out even more things that Intuit Assist can do. Um, but it's pretty cool just to get an idea for what some of these new AI features that they are highlighting can actually do. So now that we've talked about some of those pricing changes and we have talked about some of the new features, let's talk about some of the maybe not so great, depending on how you see it, things that are changing within QuickBooks. And one of those things is the discontinuation of service for QuickBooks Desktop 2022. So here's an article, you can see a little bit about this, but essentially they are going to be discontinuing this. This is following uh, the process that they have been going through where older versions are getting discontinued continued. So if you've been on them, you're not going to get support for those anymore. You're going to lose potentially a lot of functionality that you're using. So the goal is really to try to get people to migrate either to QuickBooks Online or potentially to their QuickBooks Enterprise desktop functionality, which is another product. So if you're curious what this discontinuation means, um, here's some information about it. Essentially, it is going to be starting after May 31st of 2025. Uh, essentially, it's going to be discontinued, and that includes all of these different versions of it. Um, and essentially, you won't have access to technical support if you run into problems or a bunch of the different services that are integrated within QuickBooks Desktop. So you can see a little bit more about this. I will post this link down below, which tells you a little bit more about what you need to do. Uh, essentially, they're trying to get you to upgrade to QuickBooks Desktop Plus 2024, um, which you can still do. But again, it's just kind of kicking the can down the road. What they really want you to do is to consider moving to QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise or QuickBooks Online. And QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise, if you're interested in that, that is a separate product. It is a higher priced product, but it could be a good fit, especially if you have a more complicated business structure, maybe a business, bigger business, um, or perhaps you have multiple different business entities, then the Enterprise Desktop could be a good solution for you. So if you're curious what it exactly means by the fact that service will be discontinuing for the 2022 version, this is where in the FAQs, you can get a little bit more information of what that means. So payroll is essentially not going to be um, supported in the same way anymore. Credit card processing, merchant services, recurring payments, um, online banking, as far as sending online payments, transfers, that kind of stuff. So a lot of the functionality is no longer going to work. Now, all of that said, if you don't need any of these things, I do know some people continue to utilize those old desktop versions for a long time, but you might run into an issue down the line, especially if you have to upgrade your operating system or something like that, you may end up losing access to your data. So it's probably not a great game to try to utilize an outdated desktop version that no longer has support, because again, if something happens, there's really no one left to help you. Now, for those of you who really want to stay on something desktop oriented, you do not want to go to an online solution. 
This is where QuickBooks Enterprise comes in, and they have both an online version, a cloud-based version, and they also have a desktop version. Now, again, this is probably for larger small businesses, and this is a solution that has a lot of bells and whistles, so it can be a really robust solution that goes above and beyond what something like QuickBooks Online has capability to do, um, but it may be a great solution for more complex businesses. So it starts at about $130 a month or can go all the way up to several hundred dollars a month, depending on the functionality that you need and the number of users that you need. And if you're curious about this, I'm going to link down below to the information about QuickBooks Enterprise. It will tell you what the product is like. There's a product tour on here. You can see what you think. And then if you're interested in this, I encourage you to reach out to us. My email is below as well. You can email us at support at balancecfo.com so we can connect you with some of our experts who can help get you set up. So now the last thing that I wanted to talk about related to changes in QuickBooks is the discontinuation of tags. So this one was a little bit of a surprise to me. I got an email late last year that basically just said tags are no longer going to be supported. And that date was as of March 8th. Now this is coming out around that time. And as of yet, I have seen nothing related to how this is actually going to happen in practice. So I'm not sure if this date is gonna get pushed back or maybe between when I'm recording this at the end of February and when you're watching this, there may have been some evolution and changes in this, but I know as of right now, I'm still able to create tags and utilize them within QuickBooks Online. But I wanted to show you this in case this is something that impacts you. If you are someone who utilizes tags in order to help you really segregate out your different streams of income or expenses, or you know, tag them for various different reasons. So there's lots of reasons you could be using tags. I know a lot of people that use it to track project profitability or you know various divisions in their business, right? And so this is something that is gonna make that quite a bit harder. So here's what this says. It basically says tags will no longer be supported. Again, this came out a few months ago. I have not seen anything from QuickBooks since. So there have been no other official communications on this. And so that's a little bit of a surprise. And so what we're seeing now is what they're gonna be doing is getting rid of tags, but then they are replacing them with custom fields. Well, as of right now, you can have tons and tons and tons of tags. And now instead of using tags, they're gonna have you use custom fields. But you can see here that if you are Simple Start, for instance, you get one custom field, one. So you went from having endless numbers of tags to one custom field that you can utilize. If you're on essentials, you get four, plus you get four, and advanced, you get 12. I have no idea how they came up with these numbers, um, but that's a very big difference. So custom fields are something that exists already, but most people are not using them necessarily for this same kind of tag functionality. And it looks like all they're really doing is adding one of them for Simple Start Essentials and Plus. And they're going to allow you to migrate those over. Now, what's really interesting here is they did give some details on the time frame of when this is going to happen. And they said, watch for an email from QuickBooks team in the first week of February. There has been nothing. Um, I'm recording this on the last day of February. and no one I know has received this specific email with more information. And it was really supposed to allow you to migrate that. So there was gonna be some kind of migration tool that they talked about um, and that it would be available that first week of February. I have not seen anything yet. And then it said as of March 8th, which if you're watching this video, it's probably a little bit after Mar March 8th or a lot after, depending. <laughs> but you might already be in a place where you have a read only. So go and check QuickBooks if you're not sure and see if it allows you to add a tag to any transactions. And that'll tell you if you have a read only mode. And it looks like you're still gonna be able to view and generate reports, but only through the end of April. So by May 1st, they are getting rid of them completely. You use tags in the past, for example, right? They're going to be getting rid of them entirely. Go download all of those reports by tags. Run your reports that you typically want to see. Save them somewhere because there is no guarantee you will be able to see any of that information past May first. So again, not only are tags going away, but they're also going away historically. So this isn't something that you're still going to be able to access for the past, just not the future. It looks like they're taking them out completely from QuickBooks Online. So why do I think they're doing this with tags? 
Well, I have some theories. And the main theory is that people were utilizing tags a lot of times as kind of a workaround. And what I mean by that is they would use them sort of as a way to do class tracking, which is something you would have to have at least QuickBooks Plus to have access to class tracking. And some people were using tags to essentially be able to use class tracking in Simple Start and Essentials, where they could divide out their different streams of income and track them separately. And I think QuickBooks got wise to that, realize that what they really want to do is encourage people to be on those higher levels of QuickBooks and to pay for, say, QuickBooks Plus for the ability to be able to do that. And so I think that might at least be part of why they are getting rid of a very, very popular functionality, which is tags. Now, it's still up in the air because I haven't seen how they're going to do this migration to these custom fields, how simple it will be or how difficult it will be and how useful it will be for those who have been using tags heavily. I can't really say whether the new solution is going to cut it. But what I will tell you is that if you are someone who is worried about this or when they roll out those changes, you are unhappy with it, there are other options. I have actually been playing around a lot with Zero this year. I actually migrated my books into Zero. So I'm keeping them in both QuickBooks Online and Zero right now. And I really like their tracking category functionality, which is available in every different package. So even on the lower level packages, you still have access to those tracking categories, which I think is great. And I have been utilizing them. I'm actually gonna be doing a video soon within the next couple of weeks on how I utilize those tracking categories in my business in Zero. So definitely make sure you're subscribed so you do not miss that, especially if you are potentially interested in moving your accounting software. So there you have it. Lots of changes going on at QuickBooks right now. Some seem actually positive and good. Some maybe not so much, especially depending on what type of functionality or what solution you are utilizing. So what do you do now? Well, the first thing is to figure out if any of this affects you. So has anything affected you that is coming or has recently happened? And are you still happy with QuickBooks? If you are, then I don't think you really need to do much. If you're happy with the solution that you're using, then you don't need to make a change. However, if for any reason you're unhappy, it could be a time to start looking at other solutions, whether that be another QuickBooks solution like QuickBooks Enterprise Desktop, or whether it might be moving to another cloud-based accounting software. Either way, this is a really good time to be making that decision. Now, depending on what camp you are in, let's say you are a QuickBooks desktop user and you're looking to switch to QuickBooks Online, then I'd love for you to go watch this video where I talk about which QuickBooks Online level is right for you. But if instead you decide that you want to look at some alternatives, I have a video all about different QuickBooks alternatives, including Zero, which I talked about here today, so you can learn a little bit about them as well. That video is up on the screen right now. And if you like this content, make sure to like and subscribe and tell me below what you're thinking about QuickBooks right now. Are you going to stick with them? Do these changes affect you? Um, please let me know in the comments and I will see you next time.